Hey everyone, I'm your average guy Sahil Gogna. Welcome back to this video. So in today's video, we are going to look into M Engineering EC offered at the University of Waterloo. So without any delay, let's get started. Before we start our conversation, can you please tell the audience something about your background? So oh, I just graduated from University of Waterloo. and i would be working as a full time data scientist at an insurance firm other than that uh, i'm from india i did my bachelor's in electrical engineering from thapar in thapar university and uh, i worked for around 2 years at reliance industries limited as an engineer manager while you were applying for the universities here in canada which other university did you consider and why did you choose Uh, the University of Waterloo. So I applied for UBC, McGill, University of Alberta, and U Waterloo. So idea was to go for the best universities here, but I didn't apply to like for UFT because it's very expensive. Um, I really wanted to get into a McGill, but I didn't get an admit from there. And uh, yeah, U Waterloo was my second priority. The reason being Waterloo is uh, so McGill. was first priority because uh montreal is a i hub and uh waterloo was second priority because it is the best school in canada for software or computer related course and a is based on that also it has a really good reputation in us as well as in canada in terms of hiring people from computer science Actually, were there any special requirements for the admission while you were applying for University of Waterloo? Last time when I applied, there were very hardcore requirements like the basic you have to appear for IELTS. Uh, they want you to have at least a uh, seven overall and six point five in probably writing and speaking. Uh, but I wrote TOEFL, and for TOEFL you just have to be have to score after uh, like about ninety. And twenty five in each section, so which which isn't very difficult. It's basic. It's have uh, that's what they require everywhere. Uh, from this year onwards, I think they have started to ask for GRE scores as well. And uh, other than that, in terms of GP, I think you're supposed to have seven point five plus. And even though it's not written somewhere, but it's so everyone that I've met, they usually had a GP of eight point five here. Like whoever came from India, so probably a GP of eight point five and um, a good resume. That's all is required. And actually, one question regarding your background: since you are uh, an electrical engineer, so was it really hard to switch your background from electrical to computer science and then get a job as data scientist? So how hard was your journey? So electrical is. in in my opinion electrical is the most difficult engineering background as it requires a lot of maths and analysis so in terms of mathematical background for data science it was already there because we deal with matrix algebra and uh, like linear algebra and all that in terms of data science yes it is um, it 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 is still is uh, an evolving field so it was difficult <clears throat> i think i prepared uh, by doing some specialization from coursera uh, this deep learning specialization from coursera which i did also this course by andrew n uh, on machine learning on coursera so i did those before coming here and uh, i was just exploring the idea to switch into data was more driven by you know passion towards actually doing something which would be impactful rather than checking things off and i was always interested in doing research so I think question. So whenever uh, if someone is considering switching from uh, let's say mechanical, electrical, or probably civil, uh, totally unrelated fields to AI, the only suggestion would be to make sure that you are really interested into this field, and to. So I read a lot of books before getting into data science. I was reading free economics, a uh, uh, power of habit, or. Uh, probably like outliers so all these books are based on how statistically they prove statistically what is better and what's not so you need to have that sort of interest and uh, that sort of passion for data science to and actually uh, 
how was your course structured in terms of the subjects so you you were from electrical background and you chose ec right and what the all the subjects related to electrical and some were related to the computers so how was this whole course structured is an interesting thing about north american universities they do have electrical and computer engineering and most of the times it has nothing to do with electrical engineering as per so back in india we call power engineering as electrical engineering and then we also have electronics here electronics is a part of uh, electrical and computer engineering but electrical is not there are very few subjects from electrical hardcore electrical engineering in this uh, ec they usually have some specializations which are specifically aimed for people from electrical or power background from india but electrical part is very limited and you can skip it all along and you can just take computer science courses and you'd be good if you want to switch so i was supposed to finish eight courses i think six or seven of those courses i took from ai something that was related to computer science or the skills that i needed to build and uh, yeah it's 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 up to you what kind of courses you want to choose and they you would always have opportunity at least here at kitap you how was your overall experience as a student if we talk about the professors how were the people around you were they challenging were they all freshers were they ex- experts of the industry so how were all the people around you my experience like my opinions and experiences changed a lot as term progressed like so when you are into masc you have a lot of funding and you're doing some relevant research and you're proud of it or every professor and everyone from university would be supporting you but if you're an M- mn student nobody cares about you so and you pay too much there are no scholarships for mn students usually so in that sense initially it was painful it was it is frustrating because there's a lot of fee that you pay and uh, very few people actually care about you there would be classes some professors would be amazing whereas others would be they are just there for research they don't care about you but as time progressed and uh, as i took some relevant subjects later it became better i started to realize that i'm doing things which were sort of impossible for me to even perceive so it all depends on if you take difficult subjects and if you're willing to go to go and explore unknown possibilities for you then it's going all going to be worth it so if you're here and if you're not struggling you are doing any everything wrong you have to be almost uh, you know having lots of self doubts you have to be unsure of where your career is going to end when you are here when you are pursuing something so that is the only way you'd be able to make all the money that you're going to put in, in these courses count so experience was initially very difficult and later and also the thing about uw is they don't teach you anything you're supposed to you know uh, teach yourself everything and then come up with uh, innovative projects and a lot of times uh, people do not do that a lot especially indian students they do not but if you keep doing that you'll become way better version of yourself so just keep pushing and try to learn something if you do that everything would be every project that you do you'll be really proud of that and if you don't do that at the end of it you still say that this place is is just based of money and also actually how was your job search journey was it really hard to get a job as a data scientist when you ha- don't have any computer science background at all it's uh, it's pretty subjective and it's it depends a lot on a lot of other factors so you have to be on a right time and right place and i think i was lucky in each i went through like four five companies probably four companies where i was at the last round and they told me that you don't have sufficient experience so even if you're skilled you way better than at current uh, employers employees but we can't hire you just because you don't have experience in my case why it uh, worked was i think uh, they were actually looking for someone who's new who who would be bringing new talent and usually it it's it happens in the big companies where so company like deloitte or like bigger banks 
their graduate programs are amazing and this is where everyone should aim to get it because they have a good infrastructure built for freshers and uh, there's less discrimination in terms of not having experience or having different kind of degrees probably Alexia, what was the cost of your degree like how much in overall you have to pay in your two years each term was around 12500 I did three of those full terms, so around 38,000 there. And uh, last term I did part term. So for that, I paid around 7,000. So overall, I completed in 16 months with eight subjects and it cost me around 45,000. You have already told like you don't get any scholarship, but is there any scope of getting a scholarship? Is there any way students can apply for that? There's one program is called as Mitax scholarships, Mitax. Mm-hmm. Um, there you, so for that, you have to have a professor who's interested in you and with you would be working on a project, which is, um, which is an industry and guided by a professor. That is one way to get scholarships. Otherwise, lots of my friends actually worked as TAs and uh, research assistants. So that is also another way. Like I worked with a professor um, for a research project. If you work um, on certain cases, like you have to take it as a subject. And after you take it as a subject, if professor and you have good understanding, they might offer you PhD. MAS might offer you to convert it into MSc or uh, they might also offer you some research work that would be paid. So I was offered all the, all of those three things. So if you're in Waterloo and if you're doing MNG, I would definitely recommend taking uh, MNG 699, which is a research project, which you'll be doing with a professor. And that is something... Uh, that can help you a lot in terms of um, your academic profile as well as the respect that you do not get as a, as an MAS student, you can counter that. So given an opportunity, especially if, uh, if anyone is looking in, looking to get into AI, uh, always choose MASC over a MNG. Well, I guess that's it all for today's talk. Thanks a lot for sparing our time and sharing your valuable experience with the viewers. Thank you, Akshay. So guys, this was my today's video about M Engineering EC offered at the University of Waterloo. I've also uploaded similar videos about different courses of different universities here in Canada. Please make sure to go and check out them. Subscribe to the channel. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.